Uh, Tim, nice to see you again. It's good to see you as well, Hello, Michael. Hello, Facebook and other people. Uh, and YouTube. Instagram. I see YouTube back there behind Facebook. How, how are you doing? Uh, still getting warm. No, this is good. This is good. Uh, you're such a but dork. So, like, we were asked a virtual like, One of our readers wrote in. <laughs> <laughs> Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> Love you, love Curious show. about our new brand. Yeah, our new brand. Uh, Which you can see here. In, and here. And, and here. here. Yeah, we're very consistent in our Yeah. <clears throat> but um, thoughts on the new brand? Why a new brand? What's up with the new brand, Tim? Uh, you know, it, for one, I think it's, it's always good for brands to stay fresh, to stay relevant, to stay top of mind. And I think a, a new look and feel certainly helps with that. But we've gone through a lot of change over the last year, and I think the, the new brand certainly reflects a lot of that uh, beyond just something fresh and something new, but uh, you know, we're changing who we are as a company as well, and I think uh, tying that all together is you know, something exciting that we can uh, tell as part of our story. We're a star on a shield now, is what you're saying. Yes, <laughs> yes. No, I think Tim is a designer in a past life, so he thinks about crap like this. He's not just making this up. No, I don't know. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, honestly, I, I like the idea of us having, you know, a, a even more iconic, taking something that was already a part of our, our identity and trying to make it something that's going to be recognizable without necessarily having those names. Those most recognized logos, the Disney, the, the Nike swoosh, the, the Target. The, the Aero in FedEx. Right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> No, and I think it's, I love the way this came about, which is our Brewers Batch Series. Yep. Where it essentially was like a one-off in our minds of a fun little logo on that. And we all liked it. And, you know, our old logo had like an H and a B and sideways and like really hard to you know, make sense of. And here we're just not even trying. <laughs> just like, there's no words here. Right. Not any words. There are some words on there. <clears throat> yeah. But I love how that evolved. Like we didn't go like, let's make a new brand. It was like, well, holy shit, that is our new brand. Yeah. Like, sort of our re re realization. I'd say. But along with that, we were also able to uh, take a, a new tack on our packaging design, on merchandising, all of those types of things. Because not only do we have a new look and feel for our brand, but then we also launched new beers uh, that coincide with that. Exactly. This is one of them. Yeah, yeah, what absolutely. Drinking? I'm drinking the, the Turncoat, uh, which is... Uh, a hazy, juicy IPA. It's really not meant to be super, super thick orange juicy, but it's meant to be uh, bright and fruity. And there's still a little bit of, you know, that, that hoppy kind of dankness for, for some of those folks, but it's not bitter, uh, puckier mouth type of, of beer by any means. So, again, in sort of like an evolutionary way, it's like traders are flagship yep. still. And you know, we started, you guys really, I mean, it didn't come down from above, like the staff was kicking around and the notion of having sort of the trinity of beers with Trader, Turncoat, which is what we're drinking, our juicy IPA, and then Loyalist, our new super, super light grain belt di done right kind of beer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, In a holy trinity of beers that, yeah. you know, is, comes along with the new design. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I'm really excited about the Loyalist too. Uh, it's been something where... Uh, for me, I wanted to have something that's going to be a, a lighter, easier drinking, cleaner beer that uh, makes us even more accessible. I think we still have a lot of people that come into the tap room, for instance, that may be with their friend or you know wife or whoever who loves craft beer, and they don't themselves, and so they want something a little bit more uh, standard kind of American beer. And this is you know definitely our take on that as well. So I'm oh, excited about yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Fantastic, clean, easy drinking beer, I think. Um, I was gonna make a joke about Green Belt done right again just to stir up the pot. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I, I think that's um, we're gonna leave that one alone. Just leave that alone for now. <clears throat> but I, you know we're able to to take the the look and feel oh man we should have grabbed some cans so people can see that as well. Well well, and, and I just want to pictures. come back around to what you were saying earlier, like in terms of Badger Hill being sort of a different company now, like 
you know, if you think back two years ago, we had a different head brewer, mm -hmm. different CEO, different ownership structure, different everything. Like we have really sort of, like we were talking about beers, we've changed the axe head 10 times and the axe handle five times, and we still have this awesome axe. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, we don't talk a lot about the internal workings of Badger Hill maybe, but, um, you know, it's evolution. I hopefully in the best way. You know? Oh yeah, absolutely. Evolution dead end sometime. Evolution is not totally upward all the time. Well, this industry is such a what have you done for me lately type of industry anyway. It's constantly changing and we're constantly having to try to figure out what's new, what's next, what's different. With all the hyper-localization, it's gotten uh, competitive in, in a good way, but it's certainly done that as well. And so I think if you're not changing, you're dying. It's true, like change is life and no, not no change is like death. And that's certainly true in craft beer.